Okay, module seven, continuing the journey. So everyone here, I think you would agree, you are expert interpersonal effective building managers, relationship guru people. Are you experts yet? I think we all are. I'm telling you that emotional intelligence thing will get you there. But on this journey, let's leave you with just some things to think about, some words from the wise, a couple of quotes here. Take a look, Peter Drucker, I love this guy. He says, quality and service or product is not what you put into it, it's what the client or customer gets out of it. That's a good one. The other one I really like is by my good old friend Will. The longer you wait, the harder it is to produce outstanding customer service. So what that means is that it is not, it should not happen next week, next month after the holiday in the new year but if you interact with any human being it starts now respect energy enthusiasm empathy can start today folks these are words from the wise gurus on this leadership journey with us your professional relationship toolbox one thing that we did not necessarily mention are giving you some very specific ideas on how to use different types of people within the professional world yes I did say the word use in the professional world that that word is just fine you are utilizing people to collaborate to be able to have a value exchange exchange so that you can accomplish a mission, okay? Accomplishing a mission. All right, your professional toolbox. There are some people in your network that should serve in particular capacities, and you want to be deliberate about, this. deliberate about this. You want to be deliberate about this. You have mentors. Who is going to be your mentor? If you don't have one, find one. If you can't find one, you have a conference coming up. There are mentors for the taking there. You want an advisor, a trusted advisor within your organization that can help you and advise you on some technical capacity skills that you may need to develop. You've got those supporters. Those are your cheer leaders that may be in your external network. I've also heard that person be called the believing mirror. That is someone that you can count on no matter what's going on in your life that they will be supportive of you and hold you up even in the face of difficulty and challenge. You've got confidants. Choose your confidants wisely. You have to have someone that you just can get really real with, that person you can confide in. I would recommend that you choose a confidant outside of your workplace um, because you want to be able to share freely, but you don't want someone else to be in a situation where they feel uh, conflicted about different decisions and what they know. So be very critical about how you choose your confidant. You want a good listener. You may have consultants. You might have someone that you go to that's a particularly creative problem solver. You might have a high achieving friend. That's the person that doesn't let you have excuses. That's the person that doesn't allow you to say, I don't feel like going to the gym today. I have too much to do. If they say, yeah, you know, you're right, me too. Cut them loose. They're not a high achiever. You can transfer them to something else. Maybe they're the problem solver. Maybe they're just they're going to be someone that will be an accountability partner, but probably not that high achieving partner. Really important. Encouraging friends, someone to hold you accountable, all of these different things. You want to think about the people that you're connecting with and assign them particular roles. So what are you calling them? So that you know what the frame and the goal is of that relationship. Very strategic, very deliberate. All right. Moving on, we're almost done here, folks. I'm having so much fun with you. I hope that you are having fun too because the basis of this is we're trying to get happier in addition to building and maintaining effective relationships. So a couple of other things that you can do to improve those connections, just to kind of recap, you know about building skills, you know about engaging activities that meet needs and add value. You also want to be able to use both your physical resources, those are the, the people that you know, and your excuse me, the physical, you also want to be able to use your physical and people resources. Physical resources are actual documents, resources, places you go to find information. People resources are people you go to. So both are resources that you can use to access more in, intel and intellect and knowledge about what it is that you want to accomplish. And then lastly, if you're one of the person, I don't, I don't know if you're out there, but you might be an introvert or an extrovert. Which one are you? Would you define yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? Can you guess what I am? Well, I'll tell you in just a moment. An introvert, uh, sometimes we have a misinterpretation or a misperception of what an introvert is. An introvert is not necessarily someone that's shy or does not like to people, not like to talk to people. 
An introvert is not necessarily someone that's shy or someone that does not like to talk to people. An introvert is someone that derives their energy from being alone. An extrovert is someone that derives their energy from being with other people. No matter where you stand on this introvert versus extrovert conversation, each person has equal choice to make the decision to get involved and participate. Why? Because we know the power of connections and we know the power of relationships. Do not be a prisoner of your personality. Do not be a prisoner of your comfort zone. Break free of that and make choices that support you, not me, not everyone else around you, but support you and moving in the direction of where you want to be and connecting in ways that make you feel excited engaged, focused, and energized. All right. A couple of other quick things on remaining positive, and I'll give you some books that I think are some of my favorites for you to read and take away from this. A couple, couple of other things. Think about what it means to remain friendly. Look for opportunities to learn new things and realize that there is something, some positive nugget that you can find in any negative situation. So managing those emotions and continuing to invest in this skill of feeling good and sharing that feel good with everyone around you. So where, what's next, folks? What's next? What do you need to do? We've only spent a little bit of time here. This is about an hour course. I hope you got some good things that you can do or even some new ways of thinking about things. Couple of books, are you ready? That you probably definitely should read. I told you about good old Daniel Goleman. He writes emotional intelligence. Get it, have it, whether it on your, be on your Kindle, whether it be, I, I still love the books that you just can open up. Get that book. Difficult Conversations, this is a really fantastic book. It'll help you improve your skills. And lastly, this is a classic, the Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you wanna build better relationships, if you wanna be more powerful, if you want to wow your customer, co-workers, and boss, if you want to succeed, if you want to be happy, can I say any more, read these books, think about these things, and you are on your way. I am here with you on this journey, and I wish you all the best of luck. I will see you in the next course.